to Behind the Scenes. I'm your host, Hector Montalvo. This show is dedicated to asking tough questions for you, the viewers. We bring you their responses, and we let you decide. Joining us here today at our MCTV studio, candidate for lieutenant governor, Paul Luskoko. How are you, sir? Hi, Hector. How are you doing today? Welcome Thanks to for having show. me on. Thank you. Who is Paul Luskoko? Paul Luskoko, let's see. I, I, was, uh, I grew up in Holliston, uh, married my wife, who's also from Holliston, uh, went to Boston College and went through the Holliston Public High School and uh, went to Boston College and Boston College Law School. And I went through a uh, whole career uh, starting in the same law firm, uh, went from a summer clerk, summer associate to full partner and uh, had gotten involved uh, in my first race as state representative in 2000 with uh, zero political experience. Um, I always went to town meeting. Um, I felt always have and still feel very strongly that you get the government that you deserve and that you shouldn't complain how things are if you're not willing to step in and try to make a difference. So I, I went into the legislature in 2000. Uh, I was a Republican state representative, but I, I, my whole campaign was about being an independent. My dad was a, uh, or is, a uh, Democrat and a businessman. My mom was a school teacher. Uh, and a Republican, so it made for some interesting political discussions at home. Uh, I've always been a Republican, but I, I actually uh, officially had the most independent voting record in the legislature the whole time I was there. So I went four terms, and uh, then I, I did not seek re-election after my fourth term. Uh, I was also John McCain's uh, co-chairman in Massachusetts, and uh, I went back into private practice. I, I believe and still believed and still believe in bringing a citizen's perspective. Uh, to the building, to the legislature, into government, and uh, so I decided to uh, go in, do do time, try to make a difference, and then step aside and let somebody else uh, have a chance of doing it. And but I've I've seen how things are going, and now uh, you know I'm sure we'll get into some of it. But the opportunity to uh, run with somebody who is very much, in my view. Uh, like me, reflects the same view of government, the same kind of approach to government, uh, not about being partisan, but about doing the right thing for the people and looking to make meaningful change and uh, to be able to step in. Uh, my wife says it's actually scary how, how similar that, that Tim and I are. So to run as, uh, as Tim Cahill's running mate, to actually unenroll uh, in January, to put the party label aside, and to run with Tim as an independent is something that I'm very excited about and look forward to speaking with you. But thank you for having me on today. No, it's a pleasure and thank you for coming on. I mean, uh, for those that don't know, uh, you are running alongside with Tim Cahill. Uh, he's running for uh, governor of uh, the Commonwealth and you're running as his partner, Lieutenant Governor. Uh, now, Tim Cahill uh, has on his website a statement that says, the challenges we face today cannot be solved using the same old method. Can you tell us what method is being used today and what changes will you do if you're elected? Well, I, 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 sure, I can, I can. I think that, that we get in a mindset here. Uh, you know, when you're, when you're running your town, uh, with, with few exceptions in Massachusetts, you're voting for your leaders based on who they are and what they're trying to do. And you don't usually vote for, you know, your, your, your selectmen if you're in a town or your your mayor based on purely on party label but at, at the at the at the state level we've always seemed to have done that and we get into the you know if you're a democrat there are certain democratic groups you got to bow down before and do things if you're a republican you also have certain groups you you bow down before to get things done and it, it tends to be more about the party uh, you know, somebody can come down with a 20-point plan to reform this or that, and it turns out to be government by press release. You know, you, you, you know, a good idea gets rejected right out of hand because it came from a Republican, and you know, or vice versa. And I think that you know, in, in, in good times, uh, when when things aren't seriously wrong, it makes for political theater. This week with the casino gambling, it, it makes for good political theater. But when real people are losing their jobs, their homes, when the economy is in the in the middle of the worst recession we've had in memory, uh, it's not funny. And and people are really tired and, and want to change. To answer your question specifically, what are we going to do? I'll get into it some more during our discussion. But you look at, at the record that Tim Cahill actually has running the Treasury. There, there's so much nonsense out there that's been kind of flowing out there, negative ads and things like that. But for me, it, it, it was actually a question of seeing 
the person and, and what he's done. Uh, you look at the school building program. That was one of the key things. It was a government program out of control. I mean, everyone's heard of the big dig at $16 billion. I, I venture to guess that many of your view has probably never heard of the school building crisis. It was $14 billion in mushrooming. The, the, the state had more or less handed the cities and towns a credit card and said, hey, go ask the architect whether you think they ought to build a new school. You know, it's, it's not hard to guess what the answer is. And then it was first charged at the town level on their credit card, and you're paying for that. And you and I both know when you borrow it, you end up paying three times. And then at the end, you're going to use the state's credit card to pay back the town. So it was a government program out of control, and it, and it ended up in the, um, the $200 million high school in Newton. And Tim came in and said, it doesn't cost $200 million to build a high school. We, we need to control the costs. We need to fix this broken system. And so what he did is he did not only the legislation, but got it through and took what was a very politically charged system and paid down that debt almost $8 billion. Uh, used private auditors working under state control, not like at the Big Dig where they let the fox guard the hen house. Right. Uh, they had public people in charge, but overseeing a whole team of auditors. They didn't even know how many schools were in Massachusetts before that. So they, they, they got another billion in actual savings and another two billion on top of that in saved interest costs. And now we use no pay, it's pay as you go, no more credit card being used. You, you, you build the schools, the state puts its money in first. So here in Methuen, when they're building a school, the state will have put all its money in first. And when the town does borrow, it's borrowing on a lower amount. And it's, a, it's, an, it's an efficient model of good government. It's being used in other, it's being looked at by other states. And we just got an even higher uh, rating for, from, from Wall Street. And, and, I, and I go on for this at length because I think it's important. You know, I, it, it can sound kind of boring, you know, school building, but in a recession, we're building, we're spending a billion three in new construction this year. Those are real people working real jobs, and that money is being spent even now, and it's being spent responsibly because we didn't go on a spending spree when times were good. We didn't say, oh, what's a, what's a few extra billion here or there? We built what was needed, and Tim, right off the bat, brought the cost down. So instead of a $200 million, billion, a $200 million high school in Newton, you've now got $68 million in Norwood, $72 in Whitman, I think $77 is coming in in Grafton, and th they're all in that range. And, and again, that's just the outstanding amount that you borrow, and, and it's pay as you go. So people listening to this and looking at Tim Cahill, he took what was a broken, politically charged, politically juiced system and turned it into a model of efficiency so that you're, there's, a, there's a real value being given. And, it, and it's not a coincidence that even in this tough time that we're in, t cities and towns are doing overrides to put these schools in because they realize that it's a really good value for the money if you need a school. And the state has become an effective partner, not just somebody throwing a, a mandate. Um, and, and again, I, I, I look at that, and we'll, t we'll talk more about it as, as, the, as the show goes on, but you, know, you turn that into local aid, into health care, into transportation, it's a lot of the same kind of thing. It's a different program, different issue, but you know, health care, you know, transportation, it's business as usual, it's a mindset in terms of how you spend. We're not undertaxed in Massachusetts. We, have, we, we are paying ridiculously high amounts of money. It's a question of how the money's being spent and what's being, you know, what, what is being given as value. And you strip the politics away from it and you do it so that people are looking at the good ideas no matter which side of the aisle they're coming from. Uh, that's, that's the model that I'm proud to be part of. Well, speaking of taxes, given where the economy is today and the problems families are facing, are you in favor of rolling back the tax to 5% in which 70% of the voters voted for? Yes, I, I, I was. Uh, that was actually the year I ran in 2000. Uh, I very much remember uh, running that it was an issue during my campaign. And, and again, a lot, of, a lot of folks don't understand uh, or, or maybe need to be reminded that about 70% of the businesses in Massachusetts are small businesses. And that means that they're what they call S-corporations, that the, the type of legal entity that's being used is, is an S-corporation. And that's taxed at your income tax rate. So, so when, you, you know, when you're talking about lowering the income tax, that's the bottom line to the, a large share of the small businesses. That means there's more money in the pocket, not in some fat cat's pocket, but in the small companies that are actually creating jobs. We, we have a problem here in Massachusetts that, that we're just, we're, 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 you don't have to be the best 
in everything, but we don't have to be the worst. Getting us in the middle where we can compete with other states. You know, we're up here in, in, in Methuen, you're competing against New Hampshire. It's not just the sales tax and, and whether you have one or, or not. You know, if, if a company is going to make a decision where to locate just on the sales tax, well, they're going to go to New Hampshire. But when they say, okay, but on top of that, they've got the worst unemployment insurance, the highest corporate taxes, and you know, right across the board, these, these decisions as a whole add up and really foster a business climate which if done right and restructured properly we can make better use of the money that we're getting and not have to keep raising taxes. For us to have raised ta our sales tax 25 percent and then plus uh, double tax alcohol that, that's, an, uh, that's an affront and an assault to the folks living up here in Methuen. I mean it's, 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 it's almost indefensible. Do you think that uh, if you're elected <coughs> You will bring the. Uh, you can actually get a bill passed to roll back the taxes. I I would be confident in that. I mean, again, it would be the the answer is we will try and we will try everything. But the way to do it is is the same thing with the school building program or with what I did in the, in the state house in all the years I was there. You're not going to get it done by insulting the leadership, by challenging the legislature, by saying we're doing it right you don't know what you're doing and it's our way or the highway. I mean right now we're watching the casino gambling debacle that you know people are playing chicken. They're drawing lines in the sand, they're doing it very publicly. Uh, as a Republican state representative I was actually put in charge of legislation. That, that's something that doesn't happen very often because people know, knew that I would work with them behind the scenes to craft what would be the best legislation, you know, whether it was the corporations tax, the uniform commercial code, various pieces of legislation that have very serious ramifications for this state, um, I wasn't going to play politics with it. You know, most people uh, in this state, whether you're a Republican or you're a Democrat uh, or you're an independent, want the same kinds of things. You want good value for your money, you want effective government. Uh, I mean, it's not an accident that more than half the voters now are not calling themselves Republicans or Democrats. They're unenrolled because they're just tired of the nonsense. They, they want the labels stripped away and they want good value and they're tired of riding on bumpy unpaved roads when you're paying billions of dollars in, in you know, uh, transportation money, when you're seeing health care costs, costs go out of control and the, folks, they're going to get a lot worse. They're going to get a lot worse. And it's interesting. It's very interesting because you're absolutely correct. It will get worse before it does get better. Um, do you do you think that government is uh, working to enhance the uh, to enhance the people, or is it working to enhance government as you see it now? Um, I, I think it's. I think kind of the best way to view it is it's somewhat like a dysfunctional family. Um, it really is. Um, it's family, and you're you know for good or bad, it's what you got. And, and you have to work with it. And you know, in terms of, um, of whether it's working, I mean, all too often decisions are being made for uh, reasons that have nothing to do with the merit of a particular piece of legislation. I mean, look, look at, again, with, with this casinos thing, the, 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 the big fight is whether you're having slots or not slots. But if you really look at the legislation that was passed, it doesn't say there shall be slots, it says there may be slots, and then it's a commission. So they're fighting over words, and a lot of the voters, a lot of the elector, the legislators didn't even know what they were voting on. It was swayed till the very, very, very last second, and you know, it's all done quickly and, and in a very political way. And that's not to attack the legislature or any particular person, it's the whole process. And people are, are playing games and they're playing chicken, and you know that's not how to get effective government and and you're never going to change that entirely but I think that having the governor's office independent that we're going to have people in our administration that are Democrats and Republicans we're going to work with Republicans we're going to work with Democrats we're going to have the same people even on our campaign right now we've got the John McCain people the people that turned John McCain around in New Hampshire working with the Democratic consultants I mean the same people are in the same room this this past month I, I spent every day I was up at, at uh, I was actually at a train station